What character death was satisfying to you? The way all the Terminators died in the first two movies. The first two that died felt good because that terrifyingly intense villain you thought was undefeatable finally died. And when Arnie sacrifices himself in the lava and gives that thumbs up that really hit me in the feels. Luke from Percy Jackson, books, it just works so well narratively. All the deaths from that first series really felt real. They showed the consequences and tragedy of war in a way that was palatable for middle schoolers. Lust from Fullmetal Alchemist Brotherhood. Holy fuck it was amazing the way Roy just unleashed dear hell upon that psycho bitch with just the flick of a lighter. It's what solidified Roy as my favorite character in the show. All of the homunculi's endings were satisfying in their own way. Lust the seductive murderer being burned to death on her knees by known womanizer after claiming she would never kneel down to another man. Gluttony with his unending hunger being eaten alive. Sloth who only wanted to rest dying from exhaustion along with his wounds after giving it his all. Envy who always looked down upon humans showing he was actually jealous of them. Wrath who felt angry at everything died at peace with how his life turned out. Pride who abandoned his namesake simply to survive but was prevented from succeeding by a man who kept his pride even through death. Greed, always wanting more died satisfied with what he had. And father who sought knowledge but died knowing he would never know what he wants to know. Smeagol, Gollum. A perfect fitting end for him. Finally free, no longer fighting all his internal battles, no longer a slave to the ring. Edit, I think I phrased the last part a bit poorly. Smeagol died a slave to the ring, but I think death was the only way to truly be free from it, the ultimate redemption. Having lived so long, but dead inside for so many years because of it, it seemed only fitting to physically die simultaneously with the destruction of the object that bound him to that miserable life. Gotta go with, General, Pong Krell. Edit, holy balls. Did not expect to see all of this. I knew people hated him but didn't realize how many. Also go show some love to you, Argo 303, he's the first one who commented on the hate for the traitorous prick. Thank you you, Missed Alice for posting the one of the subreddits that pointed that out. Edit 2, just realized I got awards. Thank you fellow clone lovers and Krell haters. Terry Pratchett's character death has always been very satisfying to me. Saving the little match girl, what better present than a future? Showing Mort the ropes of the soul release business, there's no justice. There's just U.S. Giving a reason to keep living, cats. Cats are nice. And defending his individual by individual scything of souls, and grass, for what can the harvest hope for, if not for the care of the reaper man? That's all I can quote off the top of my head but there's a good one about why he's standing in for the hogfather, about how children need to believe in, Santa, as practice for believing in the big imaginary things like hope and kindness and love. Something about there not being an atom of them in the universe, and yet. All right, I'm not stupid. You're saying humans need, fantasies to make life bearable. Really? As if it was some kind of pink pill? No. Humans need fantasy to be human. To be the place where the falling angel meets the rising ape. Tooth fairies? Hogfathers? Little, yes. As practice, you have to start out learning to believe the little lies. So we can believe the big ones? Yes. Justice. Mercy. Duty. That sort of thing. They're not the same at all. You think so? Then take the universe and grind it down to the finest powder and sieve it through the finest sieve and then show me one atom of justice, one molecule of mercy. And yet you act as if there is some ideal order in the world, as if there is some, some rightness in the universe by which it may be judged. Yes, but people have got to believe that, or what's the point, my point exactly. Dot dot dot. You make us sound mad. No. You need to believe in things that aren't true. How else can they become? My favorite quote. Truth, justice, mercy, they're all lies. They're also what makes us human. Hopefully this isn't too morbid, but Pratchett's actual death was also strangely satisfying to me. For someone who publicly and vehemently campaigned for the right to assisted suicide in the UK someone who famously suffered from Alzheimer's, and was personally invested in that fight the media's description of his death was remarkably tactful. Terry Pratchett passed away in his home, with his cat sleeping on his bed, surrounded by his family. Alzheimer's sucks. It really, truly is awful for both the victim and the family. 
for Pratchett to pass while he still had his wits about him, with his family at his side, suggests that he chose the time and place. Just as he had always argued people should be able to do. We'll probably never know if it's true, but I find a kind of satisfaction in that. When I play the Mass Effect trilogy, I play as heavy Paragon as I can. But, no matter how Paragon you are, you smash that renegade trigger with the fist of an angry god when it comes time to finish off Kai Leng and gut him with your Omnitool. That was for Thane, you son of a bitch. Light Yagami, it was sort of bittersweet cause it meant the end of the series but also he was insane, of course he only becomes a Shinigami after but hey whatever. Dang this sort of blew up, thanks for the awards. Also just to clarify Light becoming a Shinigami is just a theory, seemed plausible to me though but to each their own. Boromir, it was not so much deserved but earned, because we see him being caring when he is training with Merry and Pippin and we also see his temptation for the ring. And to see his caring side prevail and die for it. He also recognizes Aragorn as his king. You feel like he redeemed himself. Ramsay Bolton from Game of Thrones. I hated him more than Joffrey. Joffrey was bad and I was happy when he died, but he gave me more of a, whiny little kid, vibe, and he could at least be manipulated into kindness on occasion which was shown by his brief marriage to Marjorie. He was sadistic, but seemed to be a bit more passive in his sadism. Ramsay on the other hand was evil personified, did not have a single redeemable quality, and openly admitted that he liked to torture innocent people for fun. He routinely committed unspeakable atrocities and never showed an ounce of remorse. His death was so satisfying. Definitely V from Orange is the New Black. She was a horrible, manipulative, and just flat-out unlikable character, which was the point but still, all the other inmates in the show felt like real people who all had their strengths and weaknesses that made them likable, well-balanced characters, not B though, safe to say it was very satisfying to see her get hit by a van at the end of season 2. Spoilers for the final season of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Anya. I love her and so it was devastating, but her entire character arc is about accepting mortality and what it is to be human. From the perspective of an ex, a mortal demon, nothing is more human than death. She finally fights the apocalypse instead of running away from it. She does the dumb, human thing. Handsome Jack at the end of Borderlands 2. You kill the warrior, whilst he's basically on the brink of death, and he can't even fathom that you actually managed to kill it. He goes into a big monologue about how much of an asshole you are that would normally be in a cutscene, but it's not. He is totally killable during his speech and it's hilarious. You can either let him finish and offer the kill to Lilith, so she can get her revenge for Roland. Or, you can just end him whenever you feel to just shut him the fuck up, abruptly interrupting him. It's honestly one of my favorites from that game. Unpopular opinion but if you've ever played The Witcher 3 and got the, bad ending, the one where Geralt dies because he couldn't save Ciri, it was actually kind of satisfying and fitting based on Ciri dying in that version. The, good endings, were obviously better story-wise but the one with Geralt's death was more impactful and satisfying in a way. He didn't want to live in a world without Ciri. As a DM, one of my PCs essentially jumped on a grenade to save the rest of the party. This was the third of fourth session, and he had really put a lot of thought and effort into his character and I felt bad. So after everyone got off the Discord call he and I had a mini session about his character passing on. Afterwards he thanked me, felt really good. Commodus, they tell me your son squealed like a girl when they nailed him to the cross. And your wife, moaned like a whore when they ravaged her again and again, and again. Maximus, the time for honoring yourself will soon be at an end. Your Highness, I'm sorry but there are no better ones. Commodus makes Joffrey look like a character from Spongebob. I remember watching the show the first time, and feeling so sorry for her when Opie first confronts her and ultimately shows her mercy in season 2, how she considered her position as a bulletproof shield she could hide behind at all times and the second that got ripped away she just crumbles. All of that compassion was gone by the end of season 3 however, and it was very, very satisfying. I'm going a little different here with Sugo, Fairy King in Sword Art Online. It's the death of his game character anyway. 
the hero comes along, with admin rights from the hardware designer. Makes the king level 1 but then gives him the best sword in the game against hero's beginner gear. Bad guy has already set the pain meter to high and gets schooled. Literally dissected. I suppose his actual crimes are small but the things he did to annoy me are long. Manny from The Last of Us 2, that fucking guy was a douche from the start, spat on my favorite character's corpse and was generally unlikable, when I saw half his face get shot off by Tommy I paused the game in happiness, no matter how shitty that game was, it was good in my opinion, that part will always bring a smile to my face. Yano Slint, A Dance with Dragons. I was reading through the books, knowing he'd betrayed Ned Stark, his part in all Cersei, dealings and was glad he was sent to the wall. Then after calling for John's execution and later his constant tormenting John and disobeying orders, calling him a traitor's bastard, threatening him with Tywin and it looks like John might relent until five little words made me grin like a Cheshire cat. Ed, fetch me a block. Magua from The Last of the Mohicans. Guy is a prick all through the film and brutally kills a few supporting characters including the main dude's adopted brother Uncas. He then comes face to face with Chingachgook, father of Uncas. They have a 1v1 which I expected to be the typical last boss fight of the movie and last 10 minutes. It lasts barely 10 seconds and good ol Chingachgook wipes the floor with him in 3 moves. Add on top of the the amazing film score, perfection. This one person who raided me in Minecraft. IDK if this works but, it took us friends and I, 25 minutes to catch this sucker. He had all of out oars, weapons, stone and he stole a boat, we were in an ocean living in a giant stone that was just there, and we kept dying since we had that world for a while and he grabbed out most op s asterisk asterisk asterisk. He burnt all of our op bows we made from fishing, same with our swords, he burnt some of our food, he destroyed our base that I spent probably a total of 5 to 6 days making, decorating. He didn't destroy our mine since he couldn't get in it. But I caught that sucker when he was low and before he could eat a notch apple and killed his butt before he noticed me. Yes, the majority of out stuff was gone, I did help to get the majority back. And we kicked the sucker and won't let anyone join. Even though I deleted the world since my friends were so bummed that we got raided and one kinda just quit Minecraft but oh well. Not a death, but the end of overhaul in my hero academia at the hands of Tamura Shigaraki. Overhaul had been so arrogant and self-assured throughout his entire arc. To see him absolutely fall apart in less than a minute is poetic and exactly what he deserves. The fact that it is another villain that does it makes it even better. Daenerys. I know, Joffrey was a little cunt, same for Ramsay, but at least they were great characters to hate. Daenerys on the other hand, especially towards the end, was just annoying as shit and made no sense at all. One of the very few things I enjoyed about season 8 was her death. Bye bye, MUH Queen. I dunno. The sheer nonsense of the last season made that entirely unsatisfying to me. Her character felt like she got set up by the showrunners and forced into a shitty end. They never gave her any time to actually become a villain, it was just her being the same character as ever while her increasingly idiotic entourage complain loudly that she's going insane despite no real evidence to the contrary, until some random bells turn her into Dragon Hitler. If we have to pick a satisfying conclusion from S8, and I wish we didn't, I can only point to the Cleganebowl and Kyburn. Big Smoke and Lance Vance Mother asterisk 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 traitor pieces of stinking refuse. That fucking moon in Majora's mask. It's freaking mocking me again. Why is it mocking me? I think that game gave me PTSD. Say what you will about Borderlands 3's story. But I was really glad I got to kill those two annoying freaking calypsos. Handsome Jack was a better villain than either of those two characters, but something about the way how they were used, made me dislike them so much. Handsome Jack in Borderlands 2, his villainy, douchebaggery was so extremely cartoonishly over-exaggerated that it went right around the seriousness scale back to genuine hate for me. Also one of the reasons that made the Borderlands pre-sequel in parts hard to get into story-wise. I want to shoot that guy so hard every time he acts smug or talks snarky. Oh boy, this one is emo, one of the greatest on-screen deaths ever. 
Ma Ma, from Dread. I'll provide some context with major spoilers, though if you haven't seen it and like action movies or movies in general, please don't read the rest of this, because this movie is action porn. Ma Ma, played by Lena Headey, is a kingpin in an apartment super complex, hundreds of stories high. She heads the production of a drug called Slow Mo. When the drug is used in the movie, it goes into, you guessed it, slow motion. But not just any slow motion. Super slow motion. So slow, you can see the ripples of impact as a bullet passes through someone's face while atmospheric and ambient music accompanies it. It's disgustingly beautiful. At the end of the movie in a standoff between Judge Dredd and Ma Ma, Ma Ma, who is a horribly tortured but absolute psychopath, says that if she dies, it will activate a detonator to blow up the complex. To which Dredd questions the detonator's ability to register the death beyond a certain distance from it. Then he shoves the slow-mo into her mouth and throws her out of the top story window into the courtyard of the complex. What follows is a gorgeous, multi-minute long scene of her falling thousands of feet until inevitably reaching the bottom, with a shot from the perspective of under the concrete, you watch as she essentially splits like a grape and liquefies, burying the screen in blood. So brutal, but shot like a heartwarming dream sequence. Damn that movie is good. Hidan from Naruto Shippuden, not exactly a death, but buried alive. This being a revenge for Asuma's death was pretty emotional for Shikamaru, Choji and Ino. In addition to that Kurenai was pregnant with Asuma's child. Shikamaru finally outsmarting that smartass was pretty satisfying. I know everyone is doing bad guys mostly but I wanted to say Yandu Udanta. I thought the way they gave him the funeral after he dies and how his past buddies show up to show him the respect he wanted was one of the hardest scenes I saw in all of the Marvel films. Until Endgame I'm not sure I cried that hard at any of those films. Honestly the entire cast of Rogue One. Don't get me wrong Rogue One is behind Empire as my favorite Star Wars movie. What I found so so immensely satisfying about how Jin and her crew all died is basically because they all did die. As an absolutely massive Star Wars fan and knowing full well the story they were going to tell with this movie, I knew that the crew had to all die for the story to have its satisfying payoff. Many Bothans died for this information, was the only line that described the events of Rogue One in A New Hope. And knowing that going in, I would have been absolutely disappointed if Jin or any of the members had a happy ending where they escaped or something. The mission to steal the Death Star plans was always supposed to be a suicide mission. I was so convinced Disney would wuss out and allow at least one of them to survive. Dot, but when they all died, dot now that was so 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 satisfying. Even though I loved them all and their deaths were devastating either way. Warning, this comment has spoilers to S4 of The Walking Dead, and S1 of The Walking Dead, World Beyond. Read at your own discretion. Joe from The Walking Dead. Andrew Lincoln, Rick Grimes, did an amazing job in that scene. I love the writing, the acting, and the actor of Joe got to come back after his character died to speak in voice recordings in The Walking Dead, World Beyond. Lord Voldemort. The wand flew out of his hand, and he fell over with a thud, like any regular man. After years of finding and destroying Horcruxes, and learning about him and how to kill him, they did it. I prefer the books in many ways, but I love the battle between Harry and Voldemort in the books more. It wasn't even really a battle. Expelliarmus. Avada Kedavra. Wand flies out of his hand, Harry catches it, and he just, falls over. Which is what makes it better than the movie. In the movie, he did some Thanos dust kinda thing. But the book emphasized that he was just like anyone else at that point, in terms of mortality. Gordon from Halt and Catch Fire. A bit different cause he's a good guy. Anyone who's seen and read about the show has probably heard it a million times, but it really is the best character death of any TV show I've ever seen or heard of. Beyond satisfying, just beautiful and heartbreaking and shocking and satisfying all at once. I'll never forget that scene. Tony Montana Walter White Jax Teller. BQs they all seem that's what I think really happens when you're a criminal you end up getting killed or do you end up in prison for the rest of your life. In reality I don't think everything would have wrapped up the way these characters died in reality I think they would have been gunned down by rival gang. 
children of men long blonde dreadlock guy he was literally hounding Theo and friends through most of the movie, sorry, never read the book, and he was so close to ending the whole plotline a couple different times, but his ego got the best of him when he had his most certain chance. He was like the most dangerous antagonist of the whole movie, and when he died it was so dull and anticlimactic that it was actually satisfying. It just felt great to see this badass boss battle enemy go down, suddenly and unexpectedly, like a sack of beans and then the camera pans over to the rest of the movie like he never even existed. It's an obscure reference but. Ran from the Forgotten Realms book called The Adversary he started out as a mere serial killer, rapist, then escalates to a mass murderer who has set up basically concentration camps full of people who have the potential to be chosen by their gods. He's basically forced the main to work for him by sorting out the people with the most potential, who he then does some nasty experiments on. It sounds lame when I say it, but the author does an amazing job of showing how trapped the main character is and how evil this guy is and how he stays one step ahead so she has no chance. But then in the climax, the main character is trapped in a building with this guy and the building is about to blow up, and the guy knows he's about to die so decided to enjoy his last moments by having sex with and then murdering the main character. But at the last minute she outsmarts him and sneaks something into his drink that causes him to basically suffer the full weight of guilt for all the exceedingly fucked up things he's done. It sounds lame when I say it but the way it worked out in the book it was so cool. In the web serial Worm, Reagent was a sociopath who could only really experience strong emotions when he was controlling someone else's body, and he could feel their emotions as they experienced everything he forced them to do. Yet towards the middle of the story, when a member of his team is trapped during an S-class threat attack, he steps up to distract it, so she can have a chance to escape. He was an uncaring, sarcastic, body-snatching sociopath who enjoyed torturing people, and he valued his only real friend enough to sacrifice himself so she could live. And his team didn't even have enough time to really process his death, because they were preoccupied with trying to get the hell out of there and maybe find a way to actually hurt the Endbringer. And that teammate that he died to save was never the same after that. She reinvented herself to try and carry on his legacy, and even tried to help the family that he ran away from by murdering his dad and adopting his many siblings. Edit, and I know this is a bit spoiler heavy, but I mean, you can't really answer a question like this without spoilers, and I tried my best to keep the details vague while still giving the context that makes this death so important to the story. Gus Fring was satisfying because of the buildup. I liked the character so it wasn't specifically satisfying that he died however the suspense created by Walt trying to kill him and almost being killed by Fring a couple times makes it very satisfying when he actually gets him. Also, Benny in Fallout New Vegas. In the very opening scene he shoots the PC in the head and then later in the main storyline you get the chance to kill him, you even get the choice to crucify him. Emily, Intel Don Natasha 13 Minutes Margie, a cliché romance novel series that I don't remember the name, actually most of the deaths were satisfying to be fair there. Lol, J, Dangerous Fellows Emily was such a bitch dude. I like really really hated her, especially when nearly every gameplay she treats Matt like shit. Poor man didn't deserve her sad face, Natasha's death was kinda unexpected NGL, yes I was expecting that she was an asshole but not that she'd die again in the same place by her best friend this time, I don't remember the book very well though. Check it out, I don't know if it would be your cup of tea but the author is Sarah Pinborough. Probably Oberon from Game of Thrones, show, haven't read books yet. I think because of how interesting the role reversal was. The whole, character gloats and monologues and ends up paying for it, shtick is almost always applied to villains. To see it happen to a good guy, or at least as good as you can get in GOT Universe, was really cool and fresh, not to mention surprising. Knowing how much of a bitch his wife becomes also makes her reaction super satisfying in hindsight. Oraku Sake, the Shredder from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2012. In the episode prior, Shredder had just killed Master Splinter, his own freaking brother. And in the final battle, he just pummels all of the turtles, throwing them off the rooftop they were fighting on, except for Leonardo. Then there's this awesome scene where Leo jumps up and decapitates the Shredder, and damn was that an awesome final battle. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like the video. 
and if you are new, subscribe and click on the bell icon.